These are the headlines that we're following at this hour. From putting up posters to delivering speeches with music and cheering, official campaigning for South Korea's April 10th general election kicked off today and will go on for 13 days. South Korea unveils its new ruralism 2024 plan to prevent rural areas from going extinct. The government will look to transform rural areas into livable and workable places for young farmers. South Korea and the U.S. announced a fresh set of sanctions against the North, adding two entities and four individuals to their list that are allegedly involved in the regime's illicit weapons development financing. Good evening. It's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. We begin with the official campaigning which started today for the general election that's 13 days away. Eligible candidates and crowds fill the streets with speeches, music and cheering for the high-stakes election. Our National Assembly correspondent Yi shi -hu takes us to the site. Sounds of cheering and music fill the streets on Thursday as official campaigning kicked off for the April 10th general election. From early morning, candidates embarked on the final part of their journey to win seats in the 22nd National Assembly of South Korea. Ruling People Power Party's interim leader Han dong -un visited Seodaemunggu district in northwestern Seoul to call for support for the party and the candidate running to represent the district, Lee Yong ho Han said the outcome of the election will determine whether South Korea moves forward or backward. This is not just an election repeating after a few years. This is a really crucial election that will determine the fate of South Korea. Promising reform in the economy, people's livelihoods and politics, Han continued his speeches in Yongsanggu district in central Seoul, the same district where the main opposition Democratic Party held its campaign kickoff ceremony. DP leader Lee Jae-myung encouraged support for his party, calling the election a place for judgment. This election isn't a place for the Democratic Party and our candidates to win, but where the citizens can declare that they are the sovereign of this country. He supported candidate Kang Tae-ung running in the district before moving on to other districts in Seoul and Incheon City, also in the capital region. Meanwhile, minor parties launched their campaigns at key locations nationwide, with the Reform Party led by the former PPP leader Lee Jun Seok in Seoul and Seomire Party led by the former Prime Minister Lee Nak-yeon in Daejeon, the Rebuilding Korea Party launched by former Justice Minister Jo Kuk in Busan, and the Green Justice Party, a coalition formed by the Justice Party and the Green Party Korea in Goyang. The fierce race for seats in the National Assembly will last for 13 days up until the day before Election Day. Until then, expect to see colorful posters and hear catchy songs out in the streets. Yi shi -hu, Arirang News. Commuters had to suffer inconvenience this morning after bus drivers in Seoul went on a strike over a wage hike. But fortunately, the service resumed not long after, as the union and management hammered out an agreement this afternoon. Our Kim Bo-kyung tells us how the strike progressed. A sigh of relief indeed. The strike by Seoul bus drivers began at 4 a.m. on Thursday, and this definitely caused commuters to suffer in the morning. Fortunately, an agreement was reached later in the day at 3 p.m., and buses began running across the capital again. The Seoul bus union and management have been negotiating over a wage hike for three months, starting December 28th last year. Final wage talks took place on Wednesday at 3 p.m. and ran through early Thursday morning. The union was demanding a more than 12 percent increase in hourly wages, while management was pushing for 2.5 percent. The National Labor Relations Commission came up with an arbitration plan, increasing the hourly wage by 6.1 percent. But the two sides failed to agree on this, leading to a halt in operations for the first time in 12 years. With more than 97 percent of services in Seoul affected, that is 7,210 intercity buses, 
commuters suffered serious inconvenience in the morning. Other buses except for Blue, intra-city buses are running, and it is making it quite difficult to commute. Fortunately, the strike did not last very long. The union and the management were able to strike a deal at around Thursday 3 p.m. to raise wages by 4.48 percent for this year and to give around 480 U.S. dollars as extra holiday pay, leading to the end of the strike. Kim bo Arirang News. Shifting gears. South Korea unveils its new ruralism 2024 plan to prevent rural areas from going extinct. From easing regulations to providing financial support, the government seeks to transform rural areas into more livable and workable places, especially for young farmers. Our Lee Soo-jin tells us more. South Korea will combat agricultural decline by easing certain regulations, according to plans announced following an emergency economic meeting on Thursday hosted by Finance Minister Choi sang mok and participated in by relevant ministers. The government will reform agricultural land regulations to revitalize farmland living standards and local economies nationwide. The land and the agricultural ministries will work in tandem to reform regulations by the end of the year, which will promote all forms of vertical farming. Vertical farming has long been seen as a tool to adapt to climate change as it provides a localized year-round supply of fresh produce. South Korea's export of its technological expertise in this area is also expected to continue increasing, highlighting the importance of relaxing regulations. There will also be pan-governmental efforts directed towards allowing residential facilities in rural areas to be built in which people from the city or those on weekend farm experiences can stay, a move aimed at boosting local economies. And to address the growing possibility of agricultural extinction, the Agriculture Ministry's new Ruralism 2024 initiative aims to transform living standards on farmlands to encourage people to stay or move to rural areas. This comes amid concerns over the rapidly decreasing rural population. South Korea's rural population is expected to fall 12 percent by 2050 compared to 2022, greater than the projected 9 percent decline in the overall population over the same period, according to the Agriculture Ministry. The initiative includes providing training programs and monetary support to young farmers and entrepreneurs in the agricultural sector. Laboratories and test facilities will be built by the Ministry for Businesses to test agriculture technologies and products. Related ministries will work together to improve rural communities' living standards by increasing access to healthcare and childcare services. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. The government has renewed calls for trainee doctors to return to their respective hospitals, pledging to enhance working conditions for junior doctors. Choi soo has the latest. The South Korean government once again urged trainee doctors to return to their hospitals by the end of March. The government said interns won't be able to start their new training in the hospitals unless they finish their new employment registration by next Tuesday. To all trainee doctors, please return to the training hospital until March. For those who have been accepted as interns this year, you are required to register by April 2nd. If you fail to register by this deadline, you will not be able to undergo internship training for the first half of this year. The government has also stated that it will promptly improve in the working conditions for trainee doctors. Firstly, it plans to shorten the working hours of trainee doctors, enacting medical laws to limit maximum shift length to 36 hours, starting on a trial basis from May. The government will provide additional training expenses of 1 million Korean won, almost 900 U.S. dollars to trainee doctors in essential medical sectors like obstetrics and emergency medicine. The number of cooperating hospitals for cancer patients will be expanded from the existing 100 to 150. Currently, President Yoon suk has proposed discussions with the medical community on the health care budget and health care reforms. The government has been presenting numerous alternative measures over the past few days. However, the medical community's response has been firm. Im Hyun-tik, 
The pediatrician elected as the new leader of the Korean Medical Association insists on completely nullifying the government's plan to increase medical school admissions by 2,000 places. Moreover, professors from so-called Big Five medical schools in Seoul, including Seoul National University, Yonsei University, Ulsan University, Catholic University and Songgyungwan University, have all agreed to submit resignation letters. Among the trainee doctors who began resigning six weeks ago, none have returned yet, and over 10,000 medical students have applied for leave. To minimize disruption to patient care, the government says it will deploy an additional 1,900 physician assistant nurses and 200 more public health doctors. Cha Hyung, Arirang News. The Environment Ministry has issued an attention yellow dust advisory as of Thursday 5 p.m. over the greater capital area, Gangwon-do, Chungcheong-nam-do and Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces. This is due to severe yellow dust blowing in from parts of China, such as Manchuria and Inner Mongolia. The advisory was issued as the average hourly concentration of the fine dust particles smaller than 10 micrometers in diameter, known as PM10, is expected to exceed the very bad standard of 150 micrograms per cubic meter. Yellow dust is forecast to affect the entire peninsula until Saturday. On the security front, Seoul and Washington announced a fresh set of sanctions against Pyongyang, adding two entities and four individuals to their list that are allegedly involved in the regime's illicit weapons development financing. Pei Eunji has details. South Korea and the U.S. have newly added two entities and four individuals to their sanctions list for their involvement in illicit financing and generating revenue through overseas North Korean information technology workers that are used to fund the regime's nuclear and missile development. This includes a UAE-based firm called Pioneer Bencon Star Real Estate and a Russia-based company called Alice LLC. South Korea's foreign ministry explained Thursday that the two companies were sanctioned for engaging in the dispatch and operations of North Korean IT workers abroad. Also on the sanctions list are four bank representatives, Yu Bu, Han Terman, Jung Song Ho and Oh In Jun, for evading sanctions and funding North Korea's nuclear missile development through illegal financial activities such as money laundering. The foreign ministry said Yu Boong in particular is a person that South Korea and the U.S. have both been tracking. The U.S. State Department also described Yu as a linchpin in North Korea's illicit financial activities and a person that's skilled at employing various schemes to avoid detection. The latest action aligns with the 6th South Korea-U.S. Working Group meeting to counter North Korean cyber threats, a two-day meeting that began Wednesday in Washington, D.C. Seoul's foreign ministry said the sanctions are expected to raise awareness of the risks related to transactions involving these individuals and entities, not just domestically, but also within the international community. A recent report by a panel of experts at the United Nations shows North Korea has obtained about half of its total foreign currency income through financial theft, such as hacking and cyber attacks. And these funds were used to cover 40 percent of the resources needed for developing weapons of mass destruction. Peunji, Arirang News. The South Korean Army and U.S. Marines have been conducting drills from March 19th at the Korea Combat Training Center to bolster combined operation capabilities. The 3rd Marine Division is taking part in the 10-day training for the first time. The drill involves some 230 combat assets, including armored fighting vehicles and self-propelled artillery. The 3rd Marine Division is stationed in Okinawa, Japan, and is one of the first U.S. military forces that can be deployed to the Korean Peninsula in the event of an emergency. In other news, Israeli strikes on Gaza have been let up in the two days following a UN Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire in the besieged Strip. In the meantime, Israel is rescheduling a meeting with U.S. officials after it canceled its plan to send a high-level delegation to Washington. Chong Eun-ju has the latest. 
Israel's air force continued to strike the Gaza Strip on Wednesday, two days after the United Nations Security Council passed a resolution calling for a ceasefire. The Israeli military said that warplanes had hit dozens of targets over the previous day, including tunnels, military compounds and militants, while Hamas's military wing also continued to carry out attacks against Israeli soldiers. The same day, three Palestinian human rights groups said that the Israeli bombardment of Rafah, where hundreds of thousands of displaced Gazans are sheltering, had intensified over the previous 72 hours. Israel and Hamas appear no closer to negotiating a halt to the fighting, with significant gaps remaining between them. The UN resolution, which was passed on Monday, called for a ceasefire for the remaining weeks of Ramadan and the unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas militants in Gaza. The United States abstained, which allowed the resolution to pass, leading Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to call off a planned visit to Washington by a senior-level Israeli delegation. The White House confirmed on Wednesday, however, that his office had agreed to reschedule the planned meeting between U.S. and Israeli officials to discuss operations in Rafah. Meanwhile, Israeli troops reportedly surrounded both Alamal and the nearby Nasser hospitals last weekend amid intense fighting in the west of Khan Yunus. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society announced on Sunday that Alamal Hospital in southern Gaza was out of service after Israeli troops forced medics and patients to evacuate and expressed its profound regret for the closure. Since early last week, Israeli forces have also been raiding al-Shifa hospital in what the military has said is an effort to crack down on Hamas. Humanitarian organizations have expressed alarm over the situation at the medical facility, which, along with the surrounding area, had been sheltering thousands of people. Tong Eun-ju, Arirang News. The Chinese section of Baekdusan Mountain has been listed as a global geopark by UNESCO under its name in Chinese, Qingbai Shan. According to the organization's official website, Baekdusan Mountain was one of 18 geoparks endorsed by UNESCO's executive board on Wednesday. Its name, however, was listed in Chinese as Qingbai Shan, as China applied for it to be listed in 2020. Three quarters of the land is in China, the rest being in North Korea. More than 54 percent of Cheonji, the famous crater lake on Baekdusan Mountain, is in North Korea. Moving on, ever since the launch of OpenAI's ChatGPT in 2022, the artificial intelligence market has been growing and so has the semiconductor sector as the central driving system. Last week, global and domestic firms alike unveiled their latest AI chip technology as the related chip race heightens. Our business correspondent Moon ae has more. With the boom in the AI market, non-memory semiconductors are riding on a high. The global semiconductor market was at nearly 600 billion U.S. dollars in 2022. And according to data from the Korea Institute for Industrial Economics and Trade, memory chips accounted for just under 24 percent of global sales. Non-memory chips, on the other hand, took more than a three-quarter portion of that pie as they cost more. While South Korea is the market leader for memory chips with more than a 60 percent global market share, it accounts for less than 5 percent in the non-memory chip sector. But recent developments have seen South Korea jumping onto the AI chip bandwagon. U.S. firm NVIDIA is the current market leader for AI chips, with around an 80 percent market share and just last week it unveiled its next new chip architecture model, Blackwell. It claims to be 30 times faster at performing tasks than its predecessor, and NVIDIA's major customers such as Google and OpenAI are expected to start using it later this year. But in the same week, South Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics also introduced its first AI chip, the Mach 1. It will be supplied to the South Korean online platform Naver by the end of the year, prompting it to reduce reliance on NVIDIA for AI chips. In terms of function, NVIDIA's chips are designed for both AI training and inference, whereas Samsung's chips are more focused on the inference aspect that runs live data through a trained model to make new predictions or conclusions. So Blackwell needs a high bandwidth memory chip that allows fast data transfer rates. But with the Mach 1, Samsung Electronics claims it will be set up with a low power memory chip, which means that it will be a lot cheaper than those using an HBM. 
Experts say that just providing funding support won't help domestic firms, and a long-term plan needs to be established to help domestic companies. Problems with labor shortages and protecting new technologies have emerged recently in South Korea, so tackling those issues will be more important than any financial concerns. This sentiment was reflected in a recent meeting with industry leaders and the Ministry of Economy and Finance, where companies mentioned a need for government support in introducing domestic AI technology in the public sector and easing regulations on AI learning data security. Moon hye Arirang News. Today's spring rain fell all over the country. There were places with dirt rain because yellow dust came from overseas yesterday, flowing in due to northwesterly winds. Rain will mostly stop tonight, but the yellow dust is expected to affect inland areas further tomorrow. Fine dust concentrations are likely to soar to very bad levels between tonight and tomorrow. As a special fine dust warning is expected to be issued in some areas tomorrow, people with respiratory diseases need to pay special attention. The average number of days of yellow dust nationwide in spring is about 5.4. However, it is predicted that there will be more yellow dust days this spring. A protective mask is necessary throughout the season. Tomorrow morning, Seoul, Gwangju, and Gyeongju will start off at 5 degrees Celsius. Highs will be topping out at 14 in Seoul and Chuncheon, Gyeongju, and Jeju, 21 degrees. Warm conditions are predicted this upcoming weekend, but with yellow dust, so you need to be prepared. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. Well, that is all for this newscast tonight. Thank you for watching. We'll be back at 10 p.m. with the AI Headline News. Good night.